Okay, so here's how you boot up off of an older Mac, like like this MacBook Air. Um, the newer ones with the T2 chips and stuff, I'll show you how to boot up off those. It's pretty much the same, but I'll show you. So you plug your... Sorry, I figured it'd be easier if I was to plug you in. So anyway, so you're going to take your USB drive, or plug you in, sorry, if I put you in the tripod. So you're going to take your USB drive. Now I showed you in a previous video on how to make one of these. What you're going to do is you're going to stick it in the USB port. On this one, there's a daughter board here. This is the motherboard over here. For some reason though, it still goes faster over here, so I'm going to plug it in over here. Now. What you're gonna do is hit the power button and hold down option. If you have your firmware password turned on, aka file vault, it's not gonna work. You're gonna have to put in a password first. So if you get it from a school district, they might have that turned on. If you get it from a friend, they might have that turned on. So as you see here, there's Macintosh HD and install Mac OS Catalina. This is my install Mac OS Catalina drive. So I can either use the mouse or the, or the cursor. I can click on this, or I can use my arrows. You hit enter, or you click on this little arrow here, and it will boot us into it. Now, it, once it boots us into it, you're gonna see it takes us to the recovery menu. Why would I wanna use the USB drive instead of just hitting Command R? Well, if you wanna wipe it, sometimes it won't work if, you're, if you just do Command R because you're booting off of the actual system itself. And so when you're saying erase it, it's like, how am I supposed to erase this? I'm standing on this piece of ground. How am I supposed to erase that? Where am I going to stand? So by giving it the USB, it's like it has a boat and it's standing in the boat and it's erasing the land. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, but yeah. So this is going to hurry and boot up and I'll be right back. So you just kind of have to sit and wait for a minute or so. Another thing is, is booting off the USB does take longer than booting off the internal storage. That's why Command R boots a little bit faster. It's starting to come in. Another thing, if you go to boot off of one of these drives, Sometimes it'll work, and you go to reinstall it with the drive, and it says that uh, your bootable disk is corrupted or something. Technically, it's not corrupted. It's more like Apple didn't update their um, permissions on it. And so in order to fix that, you just download a new version of... You just go back onto the website, download, download it again, remake a thumb drive, if that doesn't work, try to find someone that has an older thumb drive that still has the permissions. Um, try a different Mac OS, so instead of doing Catalina, try doing High Sierra or something like that, or, or Big Sur, or one of those, and see where it gets you. Because sometimes I just don't update it for some reason, and I think it's just because it's older and they don't care. So, from here, I'd go to Disk Utility. See, this is the whole... This is your whole menu. If it won't let you boot into this, if it says that you don't have permissions or whatever, you have to go to Command R and then you have to go to Utilities and then start up, no, start up Security Utility, sorry. And from here, off the thumb drive, all it wants to do is turn on your firmware password. See, all it wants you to do is turn on your firmware password. We're not looking for that, but um, that's where you would go if you, uh, sorry, that's where you'd go if you needed to change the startup security. Um, that's for the T2 chips, but back to this. So you had your disk utility, you hit continue. You're in here, give it a second. So see, this is your internal view. This here's your internal view. So you see how Macintosh HD has 11 gigs used. HD data is automatically made with the other one. There's two partitions made. This is where all like the software and stuff goes. This is where all your stuff will go. Um, so you see that there. And then this external, that's my thumb drive. And then this here, the space system, that's what Command R does. And you may say, well, 
Hold on a minute, I thought you said it was erasing itself. So this is like having another uh, thumb drive plugged in, but internally. Well, it kinda is, but it still knows that you're booted off this instead of off of one of these. And so it's, it's still gonna throw a fit over it. So the best thing to do is just plug in an external thumb drive whenever you want to wipe your computer. You can do it the other way. Sometimes you have to, sometimes you don't have like a bootable installer or something, but usually this is the way that you have to do it. Okay, so you then go to Disk Utility and hit Continue, just like you were doing before. You're gonna click Macintosh HD. You're gonna hit Erase. Terrible player, sorry about that. I always have mine labeled Macintosh HD. You can name it whatever you want. Hit erase, let it erase. It'll take just a second. Good. Now if we go here, you see that this still has data as well. So if we go here and we show all devices, you can see that if I would have clicked this container and hit erase, it would have been different, but I didn't. It uh, has this one, and you can just go on ahead and hit this minus button up here and hit delete. It'll delete it out, it's okay, it'll make a new partition with the next install. So now you see it just says Macintosh HD here, and that's all it has. So then you command Q out of that, hit install, hit continue. Now I would recommend having the charger plugged in, I unplugged it, bring it to the room. But you're gonna just hit continue, agree, Agree. Now sometimes it'll get halfway through. Um, see, it wants me to plug it in. Sometimes you'll get halfway through or get to like right here, and then all of a sudden it just drops and stops and says it's uh, corrupted file. Like I said, try try a different installer, or once you erase it, if you're just having a hard time erasing it, command R into it, and then do it that way. You can also do internet recovery, internet recovery, which is um, option command R or even shift option command R, either one of those will do it and it'll take you to internet recovery and then you won't even need a thumb drive but I just like having a thumb drive, it makes it easier, it makes it faster. Um, you will need to connect it to the internet but it's not going to pull from the internet, it's going to pull from that thumb drive. So this is a faster method so that's why I do it this way but yeah so there you go, thanks guys. Okay how do you start up the newer Intel machines with T2 chips in them, which I think is 2019 and after, maybe it's uh, 2015 and after, I'm not exactly sure, usually if it's this type then it has a T2 chip in it. So sometimes your secure boot will be turned off, but usually it's on, so you're going to hit the power button and then command R. And this is going to take you into a recovery screen, and I'll show you what to do from the recovery screen. Sometimes it'll ask for your password to get into the recovery screen, this time it did not. So in the recovery screen, this is what it looks like when you have the newer, like Big Sur and after. But you're going to go to Utilities, Startup Security Utility, um, doesn't have firmware password on this one. Usually you'll go to Startup Security Utility, this one must not have a T2 chip. But if it didn't have the T2 chip, you'd go into Utilities, and then you'd select Startup Security, and then you'd hit Allow Bootable Media. So, this one must not have the T2 chip in it like I thought it did. So now we can shut this off. And then we can turn it back on, but this time holding down Option. And we're holding down Option, because we have this guy plugged in. Let me zoom you out there so you can actually see. So now you see it comes up with all these different ones. And this thumb drive, I've put Big Sur and Venture on it. I'm just going to boot off a Big Sur. If you put more than one on a disk, then it can make it slower. But we'll just go on ahead and hit Big Sur. Give it a second to boot. It's going to boot off of the thumb drive, so it will take a little bit longer. Um, but it will boot off the thumb drive, and then... I'll show you what to do from there. Ooh. 
and also sometimes it'll ask for your password you're booting off of an uh, installer I think that's usually only for the T2 chips though so anyways so it brings you into the recovery menu of Big Sur as you see there's install Mac OS Big Sur restore from time machine all those good things right so let me zoom you back out there and jeez Louise anyways you can go to disk utility from here, hit continue, go in here, and then, okay, well, I'll just have to make this quick. You erase it just like you would any of the others, you just hit erase, and you're good to go. See how this one, the data here is all filled and the HD is not, that's because all the data goes here, and yeah. So anyways, command Q out of that. So let's say I erased it, and I click install Big Sur, and continue and then I just follow the promptings on the screen and continue through there. I showed you earlier in the video how to uh, go through all the recovery menu stuff. It's the same thing here. Um, this is just how you do it on the newer machines. And the, again, this is for anything with uh, any, any of the new ones from like 2016 on. Um, and if it has the security chip in it, then that can just make it a little bit harder to boot. And so then, okay, now it's really saying it's gonna die. And so, all you'd need is your password and stuff, really, but um, if, it, if it has a T2 chip, you'll wanna go into utilities and you'll want to make it to where it's bootable off of external drives. And then you'll want to change that back, say if you're gonna sell it or if you're working for a school district or something, after you make it bootable for a thumb drive and you boot it off of a thumb drive, do your stuff. You want to go back into the recovery menu and turn it back on so that you don't have those issues. So, there you go. Thanks.